On this episode, we talk about getting paid, what to know if it's your first time writing a book, and a couple of musicians who are my current favorite. Hey everybody, and welcome to Finish Friday, the show where we help more creative people change more lives. I am your host, Todd B. from Tennessee, and I created this show because on a scale of one to peeling a hard-boiled egg exactly right, creating stuff is hard, and finishing those things is even harder. I am coming to Craft Content, a conference in Nashville on April 8th. If you're watching this right now and you're in the Nashville area, that's definitely a conference you're going to want to make. It's not big scale, right? Like it's a pretty medium scale um, conference. You're going to be able to meet a lot of these people that are in the same kind of niche, doing the same kind of things that I do and, and some of you guys who watch this show do. So if you're in Nashville, mark your calendars for April 8th. Come and see me speak. I think it's it's 20 bucks, 20 bucks to get in the door, which if you've been to a conference before, you know how much of a uh, how much of a discount that is, how much of a value that is. So if you're not doing anything April 8th, get over to Nashville and come watch me speak. I'll link all the details up down below as usual. And um, there's nothing else. So let's get into today's topic. You don't get paid for what you're doing, you get paid for what you've done. I wrote that in a post I published last week and it's gotten a little bit of traction, people are highlighting it and stuff and I think think we get confused, right? Like I think we get confused because what happens is we get into these systems where companies are releasing paychecks to us a couple weeks at a time or or once a month or whatever your pace is and, and we get to thinking that that is because they're paying us for the hours or for the work that we've done. That's not the case. Listen, my favorite example is athletes, right? Because you have these big NBA players and these big NFL players who start a career, right? And, and they're pretty good, but then they have a great season two, three, four. They're awesome when they start out. And then they land that big contract and they don't do as well. Now, do their pays get cut because they aren't doing as well as they did? No, they don't. And they may still be trying just as hard, but it's a rough world out there. But the thing is, they're not going to get discounted on their salary if they're not performing. Why? Because you get paid for what you have done, not for what you are doing. How does that apply to the online world? Some of you right now, this is my thing. You guys know I hate pop-ups. Some of you right now are pulling out at all the stops to make quick money or, or to get quick attention, a quick email list build. And what you're doing is you're cheapening that experience and it's going to show down the road because you get paid for what you've done, both good and the bad. So I wanna encourage you today and remind you today that if you're faithful with the little things early, you get more later. A lot of people don't have the stomach to stick around and, and do stuff for free or do stuff at, at very little cost because it takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy. I talk so much about passion because it's important to keep you going through those months that you're not gonna be paid so much, but if you stick it out, if you're able to find a way to carry on past all the people that are gonna give up after six months, seven months, eight months, a year, two years, then the money will eventually come. This book, I have never read. I'm gonna go ahead and confess that because it it just looks so good though. I had to put the Hardy Boys up here. Uh, My mother-in-law always picks up these. uh, She gave me that one too, actually. Picks up these uh, books that she thinks I'll like or or she thinks will look good on my shelf. Um, and, And I have to thank her for that because I'm, as you know, a huge book fan. Today's question of the week is sponsored, as always, by my book, The Creative's Curse. You can pick that up anytime by going to toddbryson.com slash buy the book, or you can just click the link that's popping up in the corner of your screen right now. It's a good read. I tell you about it every week because it's a good read. And speaking of books, 
Today's question comes from Josh Hoffman. I mentioned him on the show before, a, a good friend of mine. He says, I just finished the book, The Obstacle is the Way, and found it extremely thought-provoking. But more than anything, it motivated me to write my first book based on epic freelancing. I'm just curious, what's your advice to someone writing his first book, both high-level and practical? Did you approach publishers or did you decide to self-publish right from the start? How did you organize your thoughts? Any lessons learned and advice would be completely appreciated. Josh, you're the man. Uh, I'm so pumped that you're deciding to write a book. I, I know we've talked back and forth about this before, but I wanted to bring this topic to the show because it's important for everyone else. Uh, the first thing you need to do is go to a post I wrote called 67 Rules for All Writers to Live By. There's a lot of not just like high level stuff, but good practical stuff about what to outsource what to not outsource, what to spend more time on and less time on, and how to kind of set your mind up to write a book first. And so this is a huge scope, a huge topic, so I'm gonna narrow it all the way down as much as I possibly can. Assuming you already know how to write and know how to write at a decent level, what I need you to think of most of our are a structure and a selling point. There are so many books that come out now. I can't even fathom the amount of books that come out from publishers that are established in the marketplace, not even to mention all of the self-published folks like me who are trying to put new books out all the time, and Amazon obviously has just millions of things going on there. But if you think of a structure and a selling point, those are the two things that are gonna separate. What do I mean by structure? In my book, it's discovery, discipline, destiny. You have that alliteration here. You have some kind of, of format for the reader to follow because what happens is if you can't put your thoughts in a term for someone to understand or, or like a theory that they already kind of get, it's going to fall on deaf ears. So that structure, think of alliteration, think of a, an, an analogy, a journey, think of a step-by-step -step building process, just some high level structure in order for you to organize your thoughts around. And then the second part of this is the selling point, right? Like what's the hook? There are so many things for me to read. Why on earth would I want to read your book? Why would I spend my t precious time and, and $2.99 for the Kindle edition or whatever if I'm going to spend it on your book? What can you give me that's different from everyone else? What can you sell me? What can you tell me? What can you show me that I don't already know? So when you think about that selling point, and you don't necessarily have to have a huge career for this, but it has to be some kind of hook, either from your experience or in the book uniquely that shows people what they're gonna get if they read this book. Not just information, what kind of life change is going to happen if they read this book. So those are the two things, Josh, and everyone that I would suggest. You gotta have that structure, and you gotta have that selling point, and you also have to be a really good writer, but that's a topic for another time. I like this mug. I don't know why. It reminds me of like my Goodwill roots. Like everything came from Goodwill all the time and like we, we would pick it up and there's no brand names. There's no, nothing like that. I can, I can drink from a Sioux turquoise coffee mug if I want to. Today's artist spotlight goes on Nicholas Yi, who's a musician and covered, I came across him, guess why, because of a La La Land cover. I feel like this is like the year of La La Land for me. You can tell I don't see like a ton of movies. I'm trying to change that. But that one, that one really stuck with me. It's just the music, right? Music is so prevalent and it carries beyond um, so many things in life. And I think it's interesting how it sticks with me. But I found this guy doing a La La Land medley cover. Let's talk for a minute about the potential of covering stuff on YouTube. This, this boggles my mind because if you're an artist on YouTube, if you're a musician at all, or, or a speaker, or like someone who narrates anything, you have to be covering stuff. And I know that that's not a new thing for musicians, but I, I just wanna, lay upon the prevalence, lay upon the importance of getting your name out there along with these huge things that are popping. It makes so much sense 
that he would do a La La Land medley. I'm looking at this video that has 718,000 views. He could have played his own stuff. And I know as artists, like we get prideful a lot. We, we want to do our own stuff. That's why we get in the game. But if we tie our audience to the hooks that they already have, then we have a lot bigger chance of going a long way. I'm looking at like uh, The Weeknd, I Feel It Coming. That's a huge song that I love. And it's a band I think called Capital Four who did a cover. The Weeknd didn't do an original version. So guess where everybody's going? To the cover version. It makes so much sense. If I was a musician, I would be covering every song. Every song I possibly could. Just trying to find one that pops, right? Because all it takes is, is the one thing. You guys know this. All it takes is the one video, the one outlier, the one outstanding post, and all of a sudden, your bar for what's normal goes up. It doesn't keep you at this status, but every time you reach a new audience, you raise your platform just a little bit, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more. So tie your stuff to the big names. Do the stuff that's been done, right? Just because your audience already knows what it is, they already love it, but what they want is to hear you play it. Good show, good tight show. Thank you guys, as always, for stopping by. Ask the audience, um, what are you listening to right now, music-wise? I'm trying to expand my, uh, my knowledge base of music, my, my culture, my horizon a little bit. I wanna know what you're into right now. What are you listening to? Leave a note in the comments below. Again, I am Todd B from Tennessee, and I will talk with you soon.